Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Super Skill Pinball Ramp It Up. This is a standalone expansion to Super Skill Pinball, and today I'll be teaching you the rules to it as we play a two-player game showing about a third of it. Now, before we go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and they come with various perks like getting access to exclusive content like my impressions about the games I'm playing, as well as being able to vote on some of the videos I film each month, and also getting access to those early and advertisement free. Now, the last thing I'd like to ask before we jump in is if while you're watching this, any part of the game really jumps out to you, then please comment down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. One last thing I'd like to mention is the fact that these colored cubes don't come with the game. I'm simply using those to better differentiate between the players as we are playing. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, in front of each of the players, there is a pinball machine, and in the overall game, there are four pinball machines you can play with, but within each play of the game, everyone has to use the same machine. For this tutorial, I will be focusing on Go for Gold, but I will give a brief overview of the other three machines that come with the game. Well, we have these machines here, but how does the game actually work? Well, on every round of the game, both of these dice are going to be rolled, and then every player will choose one of these, and multiple people can choose the same one if they want, and then they are going to move their ball throughout their pinball machine. For example, this is a 5, and this player over here could take their ball, which is on this spot, and move it down to a new section that has a 5 that's uncovered. They can move it down to here, and they then mark that in with this dry erase marker, and then once everybody has made their decision, we roll these again, and now players can all again choose one of these dice and in this case maybe this player uses this four to drop all the way down over here onto this red flipper and then on a future turn they could use this to launch all the way up here and access this upper area of the board as well as many other spots so every single round of the game these dice are going to be rolled and everyone is going to move their pinball once and if you ever have a situation where you don't have a legal place to move your pinball down then that is going to be the moment that the ball actually falls falls down below your board, and that will finish your round. At that point, you will mark on your board that you're entering the second round. In fact, technically, the round one should be filled in already, so then you could go into the second round, and then bring your ball up here, and then continue to play. Players might be in different rounds at the same time, and you're going to keep playing the game until every player has gone through three rounds. Now, there are a variety of icons on these pinball machines, and these are associated with a wide variety of effects. One of those might allow you to get into multi-ball mode, where you actually have both of your balls out here at the same time, and in that case, you actually need to use the die value on both of the dice as these are bouncing around. Now, I'll go through the details of how all of the icons work for the Gopher Gold boards as we're playing the game. And once again, the game will end after everyone has gone through three full rounds, and at that point, the player who has the most victory points will be the winner. Now, at this point, I think we should start playing the game, and we can begin things off by circling in the round one spot on our board. When we focus in, you can see that round one right there, so we begin by filling that in to show that we are currently in the first round of the game, and all players will do that, and after that, we can roll the dice and start playing. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the orange player over here, competing against purple. So, let's start the game by rolling these dice, and now what happens is every player around the table has to simultaneously select one of these die values. Everyone could choose the five if they wanted, or we could go for different dice values. In this case, I think we will go with 5, and now what we have to do is move our pinball down to a spot that has an open 5 location. So, let's focus on our machine. As you can see, at the start of each round, our pinball is going to begin over here, and what this means is it's going to start going into this area and then continue to fall down. Now, whenever you select a die, you must go to a lower section, except when you're starting the round. In this case, this does allow you to go right into the Eureka area. I think that's what we want to do, and there is a 5 right here, so let's use that one. And when the pinball enters this area, we now need to find a 5 that is not blocked off in this area to fill in. As you can see, in the Eureka area, there's a 1, 2, a 3, 4, and a 5, 6, and those are within the same area. So what that means is when we go to mark off this 5, we're actually going to mark off the 6 as well, because those are effectively a pair. That means in the future, we cannot stop in the Eureka area with a 5 or a 6. We'll have to stop with a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, as the game goes on, we are going to continue to fill these spots in. 
and the moment that happens, an effect will be performed for that specific spot. For Eureka, that will unlock a skill shot, or as other spots might unlock gaining victory points as well as other benefits. Once you take that benefit, you will erase all of these spots and free it up to then go there later on in the game. Now you may have noticed that there is a single line around these areas, but on other parts of the board there are double lines. And way down at the bottom, we also have these dotted line areas. Now, these are important distinctions because the dotted line areas are going to be erased once you finish the round, which means you have no more balls in play. These double lines right here are never erased throughout the entire game, even as you go through the rounds. And again, these single lines like this are only erased once every single one of the spots within that area is filled in and you take the associated reward. Obviously, we haven't gone down here just yet. And we have finished our turn using this five to go into the Eureka area. Now, at the same time we were taking our turn, the purple opponent was also making their decisions. And just like us, they got to choose from a five and a three. And they're going to go with the three. And they are also going to stay in the Eureka area. So their ball is going to go right over here. And then they will fill in this area to show that they used the three. Once everyone has made their decision, we can move on to the next turn where we can roll these dice. And it looks like this time we got a six and a five. With these in mind, let's focus over here on our area. Now, as I mentioned before, on a turn, your ball must fall down to a new section, and these sections are demarcated by these gray and white lines. That means this area up here is a section, this one here is a section, so is that, and there's also another one down below it with these flippers, as you can see. Currently, our ball is right over here in this top section, so that means we must move down to a lower section, so we do have quite a few options available to us. In this case, I think let's use the five and let's fall down to the pan area over here. That means we can fill in the five because that's the value that we used. And as you can see, there are three different spots in this area. Once all of these are completed, we will then get the benefit of this spot. In this case, that says that you can either once per game choose the A times B option, which means you multiply the two dice together and then get that many points. The second one says once per game, you can add the two dice together to get those points. And the other one has an infinity symbol, which means as many times as you want throughout the game, you can simply subtract one die from the other to gain that many points. Obviously, right now would be an amazing time to fully complete this because we would be able to mark this and go A times B, which is 6 times 5, or 30 victory points. Now, that's not going to happen until we reach the pan area two more times. And remember, on our next turn, we have to fall back down. So in order to hit this one more in the future, we will either have to do that in the next round, or we could use the flippers to jump right back up, and I'm sure I'll explain how those flippers work soon. At the same time, we were thinking so was our purple opponent, and they decided to use the 5 as well. Now, they're going to head over here, dropping their ball down to this bumper area, and specifically, they're going to go onto the spot that has some fives. They can mark off one of those fives, and then they will immediately gain one victory point. They can easily track that by filling in a spot over here on their victory point track. As you can see, there are five in each of these rows to easily see just how many points you have at any moment. Before we move on, I'd like to focus back over here on the bumpers that the purple player used. As you can see, they have a white arrow between them, and these are special. Once you have hit one of these on your next turn, you could move clockwise to the next one as long as there is a valid open spot in it. Remember, normally the pinball needs to fall down, but in the bumpers, you can actually stay in this area. Every time you fill in one of these spots, you gain a victory point, so if you're able to hover around in this area for a while, you could get quite a few points as you fill these different spots in. Once all 12 of these are filled in, you simply erase them, and that will open up these bumpers to gain a bunch of victory points again later on in that game. I mentioned before that when you fill these out, you gain a bonus, and for this one, the bonus is effectively clearing it out to gain those points again. All right, we can now roll the dice again, and oh, <laughs> one and one. Now that means we are going to be choosing a one. There is no special effect when doubles are rolled. We just have less options to choose from. So, of course, we will select a one, and then we do have to fall down to a lower section. I think in this case, let's fall down over here to the nugget area, and as you can see, it has three different spots. One of these is for the 1, 2, then there's one for 3, 4, and one for 5, 6. By filling one of these in, we get one point immediately, and if we ever fill all three of these in, at that moment, we will then activate one of these bonuses down here. This can happen multiple times throughout the game, and it will just give two points, whereas the other ones are one time per game uses, and they give various effects that I will describe in detail later on in the video. So, in this moment, we do get a point for activating the spot, and that's our first point of the game. 
Over here, our purple opponent is pretty happy with this roll. On their previous turn, they were over here on this bumper. And remember, these bumpers are special. If you are able to fill in a spot on the next location clockwise around, then you can actually stay in the bumper area as opposed to falling down farther. In this case, the next area has two ones and two twos, so they can use one of these ones to fill that in, move their ball over there, and then gain another victory point. So they now have two points total. And it seems likely they are hoping a 3 or a 4 is rolled in the next round so they could continue to stay over here bumping around and getting points for these spots. Alright, we've all moved our pinballs so we can roll the dice, and 1 and 3 were rolled. The purple player is definitely happy to see that 3, and as far as we are concerned, it looks like we're going to go down to the flippers. We know this because we have to move into a lower section, and this is the bottom section of the pinball machine. Now, as you can see, there is a red and yellow flipper, and there are also two out lanes and two in lanes. Now, if we were to select this one right here, that would send our ball over to this out lane. We would then get two points for every filled in red flipper box, which would be these over here, and then we would lose the ball. If at any point we have no pinballs on the board, that will be the end of our round. Obviously, that's not particularly good considering we get two points per red filled in box and we don't have any of those. So I think choosing a one to go over there is probably a mistake. Now, we could choose this one to go here instead. That is on this yellow flipper, and we could then use this flipper to launch back up on the pinball machine on our next turn of the game. Of course, three could let us do that as well. It appears on both of these flippers. You know what? I think we will go with the three, and let's head down over here to the red flipper. So we can fill that three in, and the ball will fall onto the flipper there. Our opponent also has to select a die, and we're not too surprised to see them go with the three. That's going to move them over here onto this bumper. They can fill that in, and once again gain a victory point. So far, they've gained three points from those bumpers. All right, we've all made our choices, so we can roll the dice, and we rolled a two and a six. Now over here we are on this red flipper, and when we select one of these dice, we will then use it to launch from the red flipper into a higher section of the machine. With this in mind, let's focus in. Now you may have noticed that some of the dice that we've been filling in have a white background, some have a red background, some have yellow, and some even have blue, and these colors are important for dictating if you can reach them by a flipper. In this case, we are at the red flipper, which means we can launch from there to any spot that has red or white die locations. We could also go up any ramp that is red. So as you can see over here, there is a red and a yellow arrow, which means both of these flippers could launch us up into Fool's Folly, which actually gets us onto the back glass top portion of our pinball machine. Now, another option we have is we could launch over here and use the 6 to fill in the ET of Nugget because these are red. That means on our next turn, we would, of course, fall back down to hopefully a flipper, uh, but we would then be one spot away from completing these to then unlock one of these bonuses. Another thing we could do is launch up here along this ramp over to Eureka and then fill in the 1-2 spot so that we are one location away from completing these to then gain the skill shot effect. Now, once these are completed, you can choose any of these numbers. You simply circle it, and then in the future, when dice are rolled, you can choose to take a skill shot instead of one of the dice that were rolled. So, for example, you could say, I want this 4 that I got instead of this roll, and you simply erase that right there, and then act as if a 4 was rolled. So having skill shots in your back pocket can be really good for trying to hit a specific spot that you need to complete an important section. All that being said, we cannot use this red flipper to go onto this area or that. We are trying to work on the pan, but in order to get there, we have to go from the yellow flipper. Now, I think what we want to do is actually launch from the red flipper all the way up here through Fool's Folly, because that will land us over here on this special third blue flipper. Now, as you can see, it has a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on it, and in order to actually land here, we have to fill in one of those spots. We have a 2 or a 6 to choose from, and I figure we will choose the 2. So we can fill that in just like that, and now our ball is on the blue flipper that we can then flip from on our next turn to go to the blue areas, and I'll talk about how that works very soon. Meanwhile, our purple opponent is happy to roll a six. They're going to use that to circle right around here, and they've now spent four turns in a row bouncing between these bumpers. That will once again gain them one victory point, which they can mark up here. And now we can roll the dice again. In this case, we got two sixes, and for us, we are over here on the blue flipper. As you can see, there are a couple of options that we can take. 
we can head over here to the right through the flume loop. And it says right here we'd get one point for our first loop, but we would then have to land on an open spot that matched up with one of the dice that was rolled. If we did that and then kept going through this loop, we would actually get more and more points for the number of consecutive times we go through that flume loop. Another option is we could head over here to the Lost Mine, and you can see there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6 spot, but these had to be achieved in this specific order. We have 6, 6, so that means right now we could not activate the Lost Mine because only 1, 2 is available. Now we could go right through that and then go down the falls and then fill in this six spot over here. Once all of these six locations are filled in, you immediately score 20 points and then you reset the falls. I think in our current situation though, let's use this six to go through the flume loop. So we'll go on through like this and then land on the six spot so we can fill that in. And this was our first consecutive time through the flume loop, so that will get us one victory point. That's our second point of the game. And then at the same time, our purple opponent now needs to leave these bumpers. They needed a 1 or a 2 in order to keep this going, and they're okay to fall down and start doing some other things. Obviously, 6s were rolled, so they have to go onto a 6 spot, and they could go right down to the bumpers, or they could stop over here if they felt like it. And it looks like that is what they're going to do. They're going to head over here to gold, and then fill in the 5-6 spot. As you can see, that will get them one victory point immediately, and once they've completed all four of these, that will unlock one of these benefits down here. This works very similar to the nugget red area that we talked about already, but the bonuses that you can activate are different between these two things. So purple can take one point, which will bring them up to five. All right, we've all taken a turn, so we can roll the dice, and we got two twos. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of doubles now. That is certainly unfortunate for us because, as you can see, the two spot on the blue flipper is already filled in. Now, I liked the idea of going through the flume loop multiple times to try and get this modifier up. If we went through it five times in a row, we'd get 20 victory points. But right now, we cannot go through it because twos are our only option. Now, that would be the case unless we decided to nudge the pinball machine a little bit. As you can see in the nudge area, there are three of these boxes that have two lines. And remember, the two lines means you can use them once per overall game. So up to three times in this game, we can nudge. And when we nudge, we can change a die to any value that we want. For example, we could turn this two into a four. And then what we would do is find the difference between the number that it was and the number that we made it, and then write that number down here. Now, we don't actually flip the die over. The options here remain the same for everyone else. But we would effectively be working with a four. We'd fill this in and then put a two right over there. That way we could use the four to go through the flume loop and mark off the four spot, but there is a risk associated with nudging. Let's say, for example, that we did decide to do this. Now, on the next roll, after anyone does a nudge, those players will have to check for a tilt. The way this works is quite simple. When those dice are rolled, we then find the difference between these two dice. So in this case, that would be three minus two or one. Now what they have to do is check the nudge value compared to that difference. If this difference is greater than or equal to the nudge value, then they are fine. But if this difference is less than the nudge value, then that means that that player has tilted and then their round immediately ends. So in this example, we would have tilted because the nudge value is two and the difference right here is one. And that means the ball would effectively fall away. And then we'd start the next turn by filling in round two and starting over here back at the Eureka spot again. Now, fortunately, this was just an example. That's not something that we were actually doing on this turn. But I do want to point out that whether or not you tilted or not the turn after nudging, you erase this. So there's only one turn where you risk the tilt. And obviously, the more you change these dice for you, the greater your chances are of tilting and then immediately having your round end. So let's come back to our turn. With 2-2, two, two, we could nudge one of these into a 3. That would be a nudge value of just 1. And that means we would only tilt if a pair of dice were rolled next turn because, of course, the difference between a pair is 0. We've been rolling quite a few pairs recently, but of course, we don't know if we're going to roll one next. Now, if we did this, that would let us go through the flume loop. We would get two points right now, and that would set ourselves up to potentially go through it a third consecutive time to get five points after that. But again, we also only get to nudge three times per game, and it might make more sense to nudge in order to not end a round later on. So I don't think in this case we will nudge because we do still have a decent option over here. We can use one of these twos to head over to the Lost Mine. Remember, the one and two has to happen before the three and four, and then the three and four has to happen before the five and six. So by going over here, we can fill in the one two spot and then immediately take one point. 
That will bring us up to three points total. And the next time we find ourselves up here at the top, we'll hopefully try to hit this 3-4 spot to gain the three points listed. And then, of course, if we make that happen and find ourselves up here again, we'd want to get the five or six to get those ten points. So there's quite a few points over here in the Lost Mine if you keep going there by hitting these in that specific order. That's our turn done, but of course our purple opponent also needs to use one of these twos. They've decided they're going to head over here into the red in lane. They can fill this two in, they will immediately gain two points, and then their ball will fall right over here onto the red flipper. Two points will bring them up to seven. And now it's time for the next turn. Well, currently we are at the Lost Mine, and we must now head over here to the Falls. There's a spot for each of the value options, so we could choose the 5 or the 1, and I figure we'll go with the 1. So we'll head into the Falls, and we can cross out the 1. And if we're able to fill the rest of these in at some point in the game, that will clear and get us 20 victory points. But we have to head up to the back glass a few times to make that happen. At the same time, our opponent gets to use this one or the five, and they're heading over from the red flipper, and they've decided to go all the way over here to the Eureka skill shot area. They are going to select the five, they'll cross out the five six spot, and they now need to just enter this with a one or a two at some point in the game to unlock a skill shot ability. All right, we've all gone, so we can now see another die roll. Well, we have to drop down from the falls, and with this 5-4, we could use the 4 to fill this spot in on pan. Now, the reason I don't think I want to do that is because if we did that, the last option is 1-2, and that will be the one that we fill in to finalize this and take these benefits. And remember, these benefits have to do with the dice rolled. If we are going to try to do an A times B, which is the dice multiplied against each other, I don't really want to do that when one of those dice is a 1 or a 2. So I think let's just cruise right by this one for the moment, and let's continue on down over here to the Nugget. Once here, we could use the 5 or the 4, and I think we'll use the 5. We can fill this in right there, gain 1 point, and now we just need to hit this with a 3 or a 4 to unlock one of these benefits right over here. That point will bring us up to 4. And then over here, our purple opponent has decided they're going to drop down into these bumpers once again. They're going to go there with this 4 so they can fill this in and gain 1 point. So they are up to 8, and now we can roll the dice again. We got a 3-4, so I think let's use the 4 and then head over here to the red flipper so that potentially on our next turn, if a 3 or a 4 is rolled, we can go over there, finish that, and then score one of these bonuses. We do have to fill this in first, and of course the more we hit one of these flippers, the less likely we are to hit that again in the future. Uh, right now we would need a 2 or a 6 to hit this red flipper again at some point later on within this round. Remember, since all of these have a dotted line around them, we erase all of these different markings when we enter the next round, which of course happens once we have no more balls in play. Over here, our opponents cannot keep going around these bumpers. I suppose they could nudge this 4 up into a 5, but, but they've decided they're fine falling down. In this case, they are going to use the 4, and they'll head over here to gold and fill in the L spot, and then that will get them 1 point. So they're now up to 9, and now let's roll the dice again. Nice, we got a 2 and a 4, and 4 is what we needed in order to fill this last spot in, so I think that's what we're going to do. Remember, from these flippers, we could go very high, but we could also go short, and in this case, I think it's going to be worth it. So, let's use this 4 and launch from the red flipper right over here, and then we can fill in the GG part of this. We will then gain one victory point, which brings us up to 5. After that, we can see that all of these spots are filled in, and every time that happens, we get to take one of these bonuses. Now, this one right over here is something we could do just to get two points, but the rest of these can be used once per game. And this first one says the next flume loop will have its points multiplied by three. Remember, the flume loop is up here, and as you go through it consecutively, you get more and more points. But imagine multiplying this by three. Obviously, that will be even more victory points. So we could take that benefit right now and then try to head up here soon to get as many points out of that as we could. The next option is Flipper Pass, and if we filled this in, we can actually circle this over here, and then what that means is until the end of this round, whenever we land on one of the flippers, we could actually decide to go to the other flipper. Both of the flippers are effectively the same color when this is activated. The final option available to us is Multi Ball. If we fill this in, then we will gain access to a second ball, and for the entire time we have two balls activated, all points we gain will be multiplied by two. 
Out of all of these options, I think multi-ball sounds the most fun for this moment. So let's go ahead and activate that. Of course, after we do that, we can then erase all of these to show that we can once again start going over here to get these benefits. Now, whenever we activate multi-ball, we will take the other ball and place it on the start spot of this board. That is right up here, and for the entire time we have two balls in play, whenever the dice are rolled, one of them will have to go to one ball, and the other one will have to go to the other one. So we're going to have a little bit more of a puzzle to deal with as these are going around, and obviously we also want to focus on getting victory points when we have multiple balls out, because when playing on go for gold, that multi-ball effect multiplies the points that we get by two. Well, we've finished our turn, but of course our opponent also has to go. They have a two and a four to choose from, and they do have to drop down here. As you can see in this area, there's a four here and a four there, and they've decided they are going to use the four to go onto this spot. They could have used the two to go to this location right here, but that's a two slash three spot, which means it's more flexible to be filled in in the future, so they figure using the four is probably better. This means their ball is going to fall down here to the yellow flipper, and now it's time to roll the dice again. We currently have two balls in play, and we've rolled a two and a six, so that means one of these will have to use the six, and the other will use the two. I think let's use the six down here, because we can have this ball fall down onto the red flipper once again. That's the third time we've visited that within this given round. Remember, if we ever go to this uh, out lane over here, which will cause us to lose a ball, we will also get two points for every filled in spot on the red flipper. So going over there would get us six points, which is a pretty good result, even if we do have to lose a ball for that. So we've used the six over there, and now we can use the two up here and stay in the Eureka spot because we can move the ball onto this location and then fill in the 1-2 area. So we just need a 3 or a 4 to fill this in and gain access to a skill shot. Over here, our opponent also can use a 2 or a 6, and they've decided to launch from the yellow flipper and go all the way up to Fool's Folly. Once they arrive, they're going to use this 6 when they reach the blue flipper, and that's going to finish their turn. So we can roll the dice. And now I think we should assign this one to that ball because we can have it fall down into this pan area and fill in the one or two spot. Now we can complete this with a three or a four and potentially get a big scoring either by adding the dice together or multiplying them together. If we are able to get a four six, for example, then I think multiplying it would make sense. Now we use the one over there, which means we need to use the five for this ball down here on the red flipper. And since it's on that red flipper, it could go to quite a few spots. Now, one thing we could do is nudge this 5 into a 4 and then send this ball up over here to the Eureka area to complete this and then gain access to a skill shot. That seems pretty good, but I don't think it's quite good enough to risk tilting our table. Instead, I think let's launch this ball all the way up into the Fool's Folly area because we can use this 5 to land on the blue flipper. Now remember, in multi-ball mode, all victory points we get are doubled, so if we're able to go through the flume loop a couple times, that'd be great. And also, if we're able to get a 3 or a 4, that would get us 3 times 2 or 6 points for activating that spot on the Lost Mine. Speaking of the flume loop, it looks like that's where our opponent is, and they are going to use this 5 in order to go through the flume loop and back, and that is the first time through for them, so they are going to gain 1 victory point. Alright, let's roll the dice again. And then I think let's use this three up here for this die. That way we can go through the flume loop ourselves. This is our first time through in a consecutive set, so we would normally get one point. But remember, multi-ball mode is on, so that multiplies the points we get by two. So we get one times two, or two victory points, which brings us up to seven. After using the three, we do have to use the one for this ball, and we have a couple of options. We could head down here to the gold area, as well as over there to the nugget. And another thing that we could do is head right down here to the flipper. That does bypass some potential good bonuses that we could try to work towards, but we know right now that we have a value that would land us on the yellow flipper, which would mean we could launch this ball up and continue to do some great things. If instead we went down to one of these areas and we roll the dice, well, what if we don't roll dice that match up with something over here? we could potentially risk having the ball not match up to anything and fall down and not get us any points. Now I think for now we have enough options over here that we can go ahead and push our luck a little bit. So let's use the one to head down over here to the gold area. That means we're going to fill in the one or two spot and then we'll get one point times two because we're in multi-ball mode. So two points brings us up to nine, and our purple opponent is at ten. So just like that, we've really caught up in victory points with that multiplier. 
Of course, while we were taking our turn, so is our opponent. With this 1-3, they also can continue through this Flume Loop. They've already gone through once, and they are going to use the 3 in order to go through the Flume Loop again. And this is their second consecutive pass, so this one is going to get them 2 points. After that, we can roll the dice again. And then I think let's use this 3 to continue our passes through the Flume Loop. This is our second pass through, so normally that would be 2 points, but it gets multiplied because we are in multi-ball mode into 4 points. This means we will go up to 13. And of course we have to fill this spot in on the blue flipper. Down here we have to use the 4 with this ball, and the only spot that we can actually go to is right here on the yellow flipper. So fortunately we found a good spot to launch from, but as you can see the more often we're using these flippers, the less options we have to actually launch back into the top parts of the board. While we were taking our turn, so was our opponent, and with a 3-4, they could actually use the 4 to go through the flume loop again. They are going to do this, so that is going to be their third consecutive pass through, and that is going to get them 5 victory points. And now we can roll the dice again. Now, unfortunately for us, we not only didn't get a 1 or a 4, but we also did not get a 3, which is the next spot over here in the Lost Mine. With that in mind, I think I'm going to chance our first actual nudge of the game. Let's nudge this 2 into a 3, so we're only nudging by one value. We can, of course, fill this in to show that we're using one out of the three nudges in the game. And as long as we don't roll the same value die on both of these dice in the next round, we should be fine. But if a pair is rolled, then that will end our round. Now, I said we'd nudge this 2 into a 3 to go here, but actually a better plan would be to nudge this 5 down to a 4. That's still a nudge of 1, but that would let us go through the flume loop again. That would be our third consecutive time through, and so we'd get 5 times 2 or 10 points, which is certainly better than 3 times 2 or 6 points. So we can take those 10 points, and then of course we have to fill this 4 in. Because we nudged this 5 into a 4, we have to use this 2 for our other die. And part of me would love to launch over here into the top area, but a 1 is the only spot that's left on that flipper. So instead, I think let's head over here to the bumpers. We'll land on the 2 spot, we can fill that in, and normally we'd get 1 point, but we are still in multi-ball mode, so that means this 1 is multiplied by 2, getting us 2 points. So going around and around these bumpers while in multi-ball mode is certainly a great way to get a bunch of points. So we can take the 2 points, which brings us all the way up to 25. And of course, at the same time, our opponent is going to choose one of these dice. Unfortunately for us, they once again hit one that's going to work for them. They can use this two to go through the flume loop for a fourth consecutive time, and that is going to get them 10 victory points. If these dice roll a one on their next turn, that would get them through a fifth time, getting them 20. And they certainly might consider nudging to make that happen if the one is not rolled. All right, it's time to roll the dice, and we just really don't want to see a pair, because if that happened, the difference would be zero, which would be less than the nudge that happened. So as long as they're not the same, we're good, and whew, that was close. A two and a three. So the difference between these is one, and we nudged for one, and since this is equal to or greater than our nudge value, we do not tilt and have our round ended. Instead, nothing happens, and we can simply erase the nudge to show that we are fine. We now have to use both of these dice, and I think we should certainly use the three up here for that ball. We can use this to head over here. We have to do these in order, and we already did the first one. The second one needs a three or a four, so we can fill that in. It would normally get us three points, but we are in multi-ball mode, so that will be three times two, or six points, that we get right now. Unfortunately, because we used the three up here, we have a two left over, and the next spot over here on the bumpers needs a three or a four. So the three would have been good here, but I think it was better over there. Now, we could nudge this two into a three, but we only get two more nudges for the entire game, so I think that's probably not a good idea. Instead, we can just drop down to another spot and use this two, and use this two there. Currently, the two spot on the gold area is filled in, but not so over here on Nugget. We could go right to there, or we could use this two right now to go to this inlane. That would land us on the red flipper and get us two points, and that two points would get multiplied by two to get us four points total. You know, I think that is going to be good. So let's use the two to land all the way down into this inlane. We can fill that two in and get two times two or four points, and then launch this ball from the red flipper on our next turn. Four points will bring us up to 35. 
and as you can see, we have gained a ton of points lately because of that multiplier. Now, I haven't showed this just yet, but all the way down at the bottom, there's actually a score track option to go all the way up to 600 points. So once you get all the way up to 100, you mark that off, erase all of these, and keep going. So scores can get very high as you utilize these multipliers. Well, we are done, but meanwhile, our opponent was going, and they did not get the one they needed. Now, they did roll a 2, and they can't help themselves. They think this is too good. They are going to nudge that 2 once, and that will turn it into a 1. This way, they can go through the flume loop for a fifth consecutive time, getting them 20 victory points. Of course, they do have to fill this in. All right, we can roll the dice again, and oh, it looks like they are just fine with that nudge. The difference was 3 between the 6 and the 3, which is definitely greater than or equal to the 1 from their nudge there. So they do not tilt. And then over here, we can use a 3 and a 6. Now, I think let's use the 3 for this ball. We could launch from the red flipper. We can head right up this path up to the Eureka area, and using the 3, we can fill the 3 slash 4 area in. As soon as we do that, we will gain a skill shot, which means we can circle any one of these, and that's effectively a die roll banked for us in the future. Now, I think what we should do is circle the 1, because when we look up here at our blue flipper, there is just a 1 left over there. That way, we could use this skill shot to land over here and go up through here one last time before this round is over. After taking that benefit, we can clear all of this off. And I suppose it's worth noting another reason to bank a 1 is because that's what we need to hit this out lane to potentially get 2 points for each one of our filled in red flippers. And if we do that while we're still in multi-ball mode, that would be 4 points for each of these, which would be a ton of points. So overall, having a 1 value banked and a skill shot is, I think, a really good number for us. Well, we've used this 3, but we still have to use the 6, and this ball from the Lost Mine is going to fall down at least to the falls, or it could go farther. Now with the 6, that does match up with an unfilled in spot, so I think we will stop at the falls. We can fill this in right here, and that's finished us using both of these dice. Next up, our opponent can go, and with a 6-3, that is unfortunately not a 1-2 that they need to start over here at the Lost Mine. They could nudge this 3 down to a 2, but they only get 2 more nudges for the entire game, so they've decided that probably doesn't make sense. Instead, they are going to head up here, fall through the Lost Mine, and then go down into the falls. Since they did not go through the flume loop, all of these can be erased because that just shows their consecutive loops through it. Now they are going to activate the falls, and they will use the three, so they can fill that in right here. All right, we can roll the dice again, and we got a three and a two. I think let's use the three with this one, and let's bypass this spot. We could fill that in to complete it, but then we would either get points equal to the two dice multiplied together, which would be six, or added together, which would be five, or we could get one die minus the other one, which would be one. Now, I suppose if we did this, that would be doubled, so 6 times 2 is 12, but that's the only time in the entire game we'll get to do that benefit, and I think holding on to the future when we could get a 3 or 4 along with something like a 5 or a 6 is probably going to be better worth it to us. So instead, I think let's have this fall all the way down to the gold area, and we'll use this 3 to fill that spot in. That will get us 1 times 2, or 2 points, which brings us to 37. After using the 3, we do have to use this 2, and let's just fall down here into these bumpers. We can fill that 2 in and get 1 times 2, or 2 points. So that brings us up to 39. At the same time, our opponent decided they're going to use this 3, and they're going to head from the falls down past the pan and right into the gold area to fill this in, so they are just a 1 or a 2 away from completing that spot to gain one of these benefits. All right, let's roll the dice. I think let's certainly use this three up here so we can go through the bouncer. That is going to get us two points. And then we can use the five over here and head into the yellow in lane, which will get us two points times two, which is going to be four. We, of course, have to fill that five in. And then four points will bring us to 45. At the same time, our opponent gets to use this five or a three. And they've decided to go for the five. They're going to head through this in lane, and that is going to bring them to the yellow flipper and get them two more points. So that brings them to 49. All right, let's roll the dice again, and we got a three and a one. Well, a one is great for us from this yellow flipper. I think we should launch 
all the way up back over here through Fool's Folly and land on the blue flipper where we can then fill in that one. The reason we're doing this is because we are hoping to get a 5 or a 6 to go onto the third spot in the Lost Mine on our next roll, and if we miss that, then hopefully we'll just fill something in over here at the falls. So that used the 1, but we do need to use the 3 over here, which means we are not going to be continuing around on these bumpers. Instead, I think we'll fall down to the Nugget area, and we can fill the 3, 4 spot in, and that will get us 2 times 1 or 2 points. So that brings us to 46, and despite all these multipliers that we had, our opponent is still technically a couple of points ahead of us. Speaking of our opponent, they're going to use this one from the die roll to head from this yellow flipper right back over to the gold. It's super close, but that one lets them fill this in, which will get them one point, bringing them to 50. And then they fully completed the gold area, so they can activate one of these benefits. Now the first one should be familiar, it says multi-ball times 2, so this works just the same way as the one that we have seen over here. The next one says bumpers times 3 until the end of the round. If you fill this in, you can circle that, and then for the rest of the round, any points that you get from the bumpers will be multiplied by 3, so that's essentially 3 points per hit instead of 1. Now the next one says outlane times two until the end of the round. So this means any benefits you get for going into one of the outlanes will be multiplied by two for the rest of the round. The final option simply lets you get three victory points. All of these options do seem great, but having multiple balls in particular is very good. So it looks like our opponent is also going to go for that. This means they will get their second ball and they can multiply the points they gain by two for as long as they have multiple balls. Their new ball will head right over there, and now we can roll the dice for the next turn. In this case, that is two twos, and that's unfortunate for us. We were hoping for a five or a six. We're certainly not going to nudge a two into a five or a six to get those ten points, so that means this ball is going to head down, and that's fine. It'll head over into the falls, where we can use a two to fill that two spot in. We're just a 3, a 4, and a 5 away from getting 20 points from the falls. Of course, if we did that while we were in multi-ball mode, we would get 40 points. That would be great, but I don't see any way that we're going to fill the falls in before the end of this round. Now, we do have to use this 2 for our other ball over here, and we'll send it down to the yellow flipper. As you can see, we are starting to get pretty low on options for flipping these balls back up. We've used both of our in lanes, and in fact, there's only one other spot that can be used in order to flip a ball back up in this round. Over here in our opponent's area, for the first time in the game, they have two balls. They need to use a two for both of them, and they're going to head down here into the bumpers with this one. That will fill this two in, and they'll get one times two or two points for it. And then with their other two, they'll head over here to their yellow flipper. They can fill this in, and they have quite a few more opportunities than we do to use these flippers before their round comes to an end. All right, let's roll the dice. With two ones, we don't have a ton of options, and with our flippers being so full, I think we want to try and get as high as possible. So let's send this ball over here to the bumpers. We can't send it to the Eureka area because it came from the yellow flipper, and the Eureka area is red. So we can fill this in to get two points, and then with the other one, we could go to that same exact bumper. Although if we did that, this bumper would be complete, and that will definitely stifle our ability to keep on going around and around with one of these balls. Unfortunately, the only other option really for us is to go down here to Nugget, or we could just cut our losses and go down to this outlane. If we did that, we would score a bunch of points, but that would mean that we'd be down to just one ball. For now, I think we can avoid that, so let's go over here and have both of these on the same bumper. We used up both of these, and of course that's 1 plus 1 times 2, or 4 points that we get for those two balls. So we can take those 4 points. And then over here, our opponent is going to do something similar. They're going to send this one all the way up to there, to the pan area, so they can fill that spot in. And with the other one, they'll drop down into this bumper. That is going to give them one times two, or two points. So they go up to 54. All right, let's roll the dice again. And we got a 2-4. Now we can use one of these fours to send one of these balls over here to this bumper. So that is going to get us two points. But then of course we then need to use this two for this ball right over here. It can't go to any of these bumpers and it could go over here to this nugget. So I think that is going to be good enough. We'll drop right down over here. So we can fill that in. So we're just one spot away from doing this nugget area again. And then our opponent also needs to use this two and the four. I do think they'll use the four over here to go to that bumper. So that is going to get them one times two or two victory points. 
and then they can use their two over here. And I just realized they did need to clear off these gold markers when they fully completed that. Now with this two, they could go here or they could go over there. And in fact, those are their only two options because down here, all of their twos are filled in. I think in this case, they're gonna head all the way over here to the nugget area. All right, let's roll the dice again. And with a 4-2, our options for this turn are starting to get a bit limited. Uh, we cannot send this over here because that needs 5s or 6s. And we could nudge, but I don't think that makes sense right now. So instead, we can look down and see that we do want to fill a 4 in over there. So I think this is going to drop in to the gold area. We can fill this in, so we're one away from completing that. But then we have to use a 2 over here, and we don't have any legal spots. Now we could nudge this into a 1 in order to use this yellow flipper, or we could just use the skill shot up here for that 1. And I think that makes more sense. So let's use the skill shot instead of using the 2. That lets this fall down to the yellow flipper. We can fill that in, and our flipper zone is completed. Uh, there is no more ways for us to jump back up again. We're just going to try and get as many points as we can, as these balls are now going to fall down. And obviously, we would love to hit a 1 and a 6 in order to get a bunch of points for those flipper spots that we've filled in. Meanwhile, over here, our opponent also needs to use this 4 and a 2. They've decided to have this one fall down over to the gold area and use the 2. That's going to get them 1 times 2, or 2 points. And then this one will fall down to the red flipper using the 4 or 5 spot. So they can take those 2 points, which will bring them up to 58. All right, let's roll the dice. With a 1, 5, I think we are certainly going to use the 1 over here for this ball. With that, we're going to have it fall down this red outlane. We can fill this in, and now we're going to get two points for every filled red flipper box. That is three, so that's three times two or six, and then we are still in multi-ball mode, so that's six times two or 12 points, and then this ball will fall all the way down and out of the machine. So we are technically going to be in multi-ball mode for this entire turn, but after this turn, multi-ball mode will be done, and we will no longer get that times two multiplier. So let's take the 12 points which brings us up to 65. After that, we do have to use the five over here from this yellow flipper. And well, I think this is actually pretty good. Uh, I guess we could go over here to the gold area and activate multi-ball again, which I don't think makes sense. Or I think the better thing is just to go over here to the bumpers. The reason for that is because all of these effects that we'd get for activating it would only last until the end of the round, and our round is definitely about to be over. Although I suppose if we went there, we could get 3 times 2, or 6 points, because we are still in multi-ball mode for the end of this turn. Uh, we could also just go up here and get the 2 points, and if we go up here, we have the option of maybe landing over there or there. You know, I think, actually, I am going to launch from the yellow flipper over here. Let's use the 5 and make use of that times 2 multiplier to just activate this, getting 3 times 2 or 6 points. I think that's probably going to be the better option for us, especially considering from the 5 bumper, there are no legal spots, so that ball will definitely fall down, and we might not get a 5 or 6 to activate that on the way down. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. By going here, we get 1 times 2 or 2 points, and then we'll get these 3 times 2 or 6 points. So overall, for going there, we will gain 8 more points. Well, our opponent also has to use this 5 and a 1. And with the 1, they will have this ball fall down to their yellow flipper. And then with a 5, they'll head from this red flipper all the way over here to the bumpers. They can fill that 5 in and gain 1 times 2 or 2 points. All right, the dice can be rolled once again. And at this point, we're just looking for a 6. And unfortunately, we did not get it. The reason we wanted a 6 is because that would let us go from here down to this outlane. That would get us 2 points for every filled yellow flipper box, of which we have 3. But unfortunately, we got a 1 and a 3, so it doesn't even make sense to nudge this into a 6. That means this is unfortunately just going to fall past all of these, not gaining us any benefits. And after it reaches the bottom, we will have no more balls on the board. If you ever have no balls on the board, that is going to be the moment that your round comes to an end. We were in the first round, so now what happens is we can move into the second round by filling this. We can take a ball and add it up to the start spot, just like before. And then all of the boxes with a dotted line will be reset. So we can erase all of these. And we can also erase these up by the blue flipper. At the same time, our opponent also got to use the 1 and the 3. And this is not the role that they wanted to see. The reason for that is because currently they only have a single spot that can take a 1. And it is this outlane right over here. 
Technically, there's a one up there, but that's on the red, and they are currently on the yellow flipper, so they cannot access that red area up there. So what they've decided to do is use this three over here. They'll fall down onto this red flipper. They can fill that spot in, and then for this one, they're going to launch from the yellow and then make it all the way down over here into the outlane. So they can fill this in. That will get them two points for every filled red flipper box, and they have two. So that's two times two or four, and they are still in multi-ball mode, so that's going to be four times two or eight points, and then they will lose this ball. But that ball is still over there on the red flipper. So they will gain eight more points. And at this point, it'd be time to roll the dice again. And as you can see, we would now be in the second round, whereas our opponent would be in the first. So you will not necessarily be in the same round as your opponents as you continue through the game, but you do still use the dice in the same way that we've seen. Now, I think at this point, I'm going to stop playing through the game and instead discuss how the game ends. We are going to keep playing the game until all players have fully completed three rounds. And if you complete your three rounds before other people are done, you will simply have to wait for them to finish their three rounds. And then once everyone is done, the player with the most victory points is the winner. Now, before I wrap up the tutorial, I do want to briefly talk about the other three pinball machines that you can play within this box. The next one is the High Roller Heist. The ball will start right up here, and this is a classic casino caper where you're going to recruit your crew, choose your target, and execute your plan without getting caught by the guard. Now, there is quite a bit going on here, but at a high level, as you are bouncing around, you're going to be trying to work your way into the casino, the vault, and the mint by getting past the camera, by entering the secret code in over here, and by tunneling into the mint. Now, each of these things only needs to be filled in once for the entire game, and once you've knocked all of them out, you can try to bounce around in those areas to get a bunch of points. The problem is that the guard is going to walk around this area, and if at the end of your turn your ball is in the same area where the guard is, then that is going to send your ball over here to jail. Now the guard is going to move every time you gain 10 victory points, so you do have to keep that in mind. From jail, you are going to fall down to one of the lower areas, and you might suffer an extra penalty unless a double is rolled, but you will always gain access to the ball on your next turn whether or not that double is rolled. Now, another thing that you can do is hire crew, and by filling in these spots over here, you can hire these specific crew members who are going to give you scoring multipliers for doing various things in the game. The next set of pinball machines you can play with are called Pin Pals. Now, in this one, you are going to wrestle your way to stardom as you and a teammate work together to earn bigger bonuses and take down your opponents. Now, that means you can play this one in team mode. As you can see, this is the green team, and if you were playing with this one, then this person would be your teammate. And at the end of the game, you actually add your points together to hopefully beat the other team. The other team looks just like this, and as you're playing through this game, many of the effects actually benefit your partner, allowing them to get various scoring multipliers, and if both you and your teammate are in the cage at the same time, mayhem will ensue and you will gain double points for teaming up in the cage. Finally, you can play top speed. In this one, you are going to push it to the limit as you speed around the racetrack with bigger bonuses and bigger risks. How fast can you go? Now, if we look over here, there's a few things going on, and one of them is a speedometer. As you increase your speedometer, you actually add that value to the die that you choose, and with that in mind, you may notice that some of the spots over here go above 6. In fact, there are locations that you can hit with a 7, 8, or 9, and you can only hit those by having an increase in speed. Of course, increasing your speed makes it harder to hit various other targets, and as you are bouncing around in here, if you make it into the nitro zone by hitting this green flipper multiple times, you can unlock a multi-ball. There's also a test track over here, which has you going around and around in circles, getting more and more points each time you complete a lap, and you can also increase your multiplier for those points by completing a turbo bonus down here. There's a whole bunch of bonuses that can be found on these spots, and if we look at the flippers themselves, you'll notice there are locations on here that require values of greater than 6, so you better increase your speed in order to hit those specific spots. Well, at this point, I've covered all of the rules for the Gopher Gold Pinball Machine, and I've given you a brief idea of how these other ones work, and that means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Super Skill Pinball. Ramp it up! As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.